जय राधा कुंज So this is chapter eight of chapter eight, verse number twenty, attaining the supreme. This is one of the more important verses in this section. Parastasmatu bhavanyahu 
Vyakto Vyakta Sanatanaha Yatsa Sarveshu Bhuteshu Nasyatsuna Vinashati Parastasma Tu Bhavonyo Vyakto Vyakta Sanatanaha Yatsar Yatsa Sarveshu Bhuteshu Nasyatsa Nasyatsa Nasyatsuna Vinashati Parastasma Tu Bhavonyo Vyakto Vyakta Sanatanaha Yatsar Sarveshu Bhuteshu Nasyatsu Navinashiti Vanyastasma Tu Bhavon Yo Vyakto Vyakta Sanatanaha Yatsa Sarvesu Bhuteshu Yatsa Surya Vinasyati Okay, para, transcendental, tasmat, to that, to, but, bhava, nature, anya, another, avyakta, unmanifest, avyaktat, to the unmanifest, sanatanaha, eternal, Yatsa, that which, Sarvesu, all, Bhuteshu, manifestation, Nasyatsu, being annihilated, Na, never, Vinashati, is annihilated. Translation, so, the previous verse said, Let's see. Uh, okay. Okay, so now we're speaking about spiritual nature. Yet there is another unmanifested nature, which is eternal and is transcendental to the manifested, to this manifested, unmanifested matter. It is supreme and never annihilated when all in this world is annihilated. That, repart, that part remains as it is. Krishna's superior spiritual energy is transcendental and eternal. It is beyond all the changes of material nature, which is manifest and annihilated during the days and nights of Brahma. Krishna's superior energy is completely opposite in quality to material nature. Superior and inferior nature are explained in the seventh chapter. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svam Padanti Kam Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste, Zaranani, Devi, Kaura, Bari, Bajari, Nivase, Zaduni, Bari, Bajari, Yate, Zaranani. Shri Krishna, Jai, Donamun, Nandani, 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 Gaura, Bhakti, Vindu, Ki. Shri Sri Radha, Krishna, Gopu, Gopi, Nai, Shamakun, Radhakun, Kiri, Gopu, Dan, Ki. Vrindavan, Dam, Ki. Navadvik, Mayapur, Dam, Ki. Shraganath, Puri, Dam, Ki. Ganga, Mai, Ki. Jamuna, Mai, Ki. Tulasi, Devi, Ki. Bhakti, Devi, Ki. 
Ja, dat weet ik maar. Ik ken het niet. Kom even naar de. Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hari Hari. Hari Ram. Hari Ram. Rama Rama. Hari Hari. Hey, don't run. <laughs> what happened, Mataji? Oh, the measuring cup? I threw it away because it was dirty. <laughs> really? It's no good. You can't use that. It's terrible. I, they gave me a measuring cup from the kitchen. It was black and dirt spots all over it. So I thought, I can't give it back to the temple. <laughs> Better than better to use just you know use something clean or don't use anything. You should have seen it. It was like ugly, dirty, messy, filthy. I did you a favor. <laughs> really. Okay, so this material world is ugly, dirty, messy, full of. Plastic, plastic, and all kinds of other things that we don't like. It's got glass, it's got wood, it's got, uh, what else it has? Corona, uh, so wonderful things. It's got hepatitis, it's got beriberi disease, elephantitis. What else does it have? It's typhoid, cancer, fever. Depression, suppression, repression, a lot of oppression, <laughs> oppression. <laughs> so this material world is not a nice place. Although people want to make it nice, they try to somehow or other arrange this world so it can be nice. But the more you try to arrange it, the worse it gets. Because that's just the way it is. This is material world is meant to give you trouble. That's all. And giving you trouble is actually special mercy. <laughs> because when you know that there's another place that's better than this, you think, well, maybe let me get out of here. We got to get out of this place. It's the last thing we ever do. Tell her that. Measuring cup is not fit even for, you know, Kuba Karna. <laughs> Kuba Karna wouldn't even use it, it's too dirty. How could they cook with stuff like that? That's terrible. She, is, she, is she okay? And she's going to have a heart attack? It'll turn out better because it's not being used with that measuring cup. It's terrible. It had black spots all over it, and it was dirty. <laughs> I just, I just chucked it. <laughs> Prabhupada would never. Use, I mean, Prabhupada would immediately throw it away. What is this? How could he use this for the, for the deities? Don't you realize it's God? Deity worship means, what's the first principle of deity worship? Glanliness. Yeah. Everything has to be, as Prabhupada says, revolutionary clean. He didn't say clean, he said revolutionary clean. He said all our temples should be revolutionary clean. So when it comes to deity worship, that should be even a higher standard than everything else we do. It's so, so important. Prabhupada even stopped cooking when he saw the kitchen was too dirty. He says, no cooking. Either you forget about the orphans, you clean the kitchen first, then you do the orphans. Yeah. 
That is how important it is. Yeah, because Krishna doesn't accept it if it's done in the, with dirty utensils or just it's dirty. He won't accept it. What's the what's the use of even trying to do it if he's not going to accept it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So yeah, but there's another place that's transcendental to this dirty place. <laughs> It's called the spiritual world. It's where everything is clean and they and they don't use soap. <laughs> everything is spotlessly pure, full of f full of natural effulgence. Never gets dirt. There's no question of dirt in the spiritual world because dirt doesn't exist. And even if it even if there is dirt in the spiritual world, which there is, it's clean. <laughs> it's dirt. Confirmed, see. <laughs> yeah, so the dirt is, even the dirt in the spiritual world is clean. Someone asked Prabhupada, is there snow in the spiritual world? Prabhupada said, yes, but it's warm. <laughs> so, so we can't imagine what the spiritual world is like because we our, our only perception is what we can perceive in this world, which is also limited. So this world is just meant to push the living entity to the point of wanting to look for something better. Therefore, as they say, pious and impious activities are also impious because pious activities can, will lead one away from the devotional service by thinking, well, you know, I have some nice arrangement here, so why should I? Why should I actually surrender to the Lord? Because everything is being provided anyway. So I like the Lord, and He's providing everything I need. What's this question of actually doing devotional service? Because I live a very pious, good life. I give charity to people who need it. I'm friendly to everyone. I keep my family happy and healthy. And so piety is also a distraction. So that's why Lord Chaitanya said in one verse, some say this is good and some say this is bad. But I say it's all bad. <laughs> yeah, what is that? What is the verse? What's that verse? Badra Badra Sakale Saman, hey Manda, hey Bala, hey Brahmath. Like that. Lord Chaitanya is saying, some people say this is good, and some people say this is bad. As far as I'm concerned, everything is bad. <laughs> that's that's by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. So yeah, then because everything in this material world is meant to distract one away from Krishna. Therefore, it's bad. <laughs> if something reminds us of Krishna, then it's good. And that's then so good and bad is relative. That's why Lord Chaitanya said this is. Sometimes people say this is good, and some people say this is bad. But this problem, Lord Chaitanya says, this is all mental speculation. Nothing is good. Nothing is bad. Anything in relationship to Krishna is good. Everything outside of relationship to Krishna is bad. <laughs> so that's the that's the uh, standard for understanding. So anything that brings you to Krishna, that's why if you get sick and you come cl become closer to Krishna, that's good. There was one monk in one Christian monastery. Uh, he was considered to be the the best of all the monks because he was the most learned. But what was his service? He was the pot washer. That was his only service. He would wash pots all day. And anybody who needed spiritual guidance, information, they would come to him. People would write letters to him asking him to pray and for their relatives and friends who are sick. He says, I can't do that. I can't do that. Why? Because that will... She's complaining about the 
about the measuring cup? I didn't ask for the cup. They brought it to me. So, <laughs> But then I saw it and I said, this is definitely not going back to the kitchen. <laughs> So, what was I saying? Yeah, so this, this monk, when people would write letters to him asking for their friends to get blessings for their, when they were sick, he said, I can't do that. God has given that sickness for a reason. God has given that sickness for a reason. So therefore, but he would give advice, but he would never, you know, try to uh, give blessings or encourage people in the material sense like that. Because he understood that everything good and bad in this world is only beneficial when it brings you clo closer to Krishna. Like that. Like for many of us, this lockdown, this coronavirus, has many, many good things about it. Um, for the sannyasis who are getting worn out by traveling and getting sick. It was a good opportunity to break. <laughs> what else was it? Yeah, that's, that's the one I can re recognize. <laughs> and I've heard other, other sannyasis say the same thing. Uh, so, and then for others, like, um, what is it? Temple presidents, they don't have as much work to do now because nobody's coming. <laughs> Three. Yeah. The other one's named Ananta. Uh, two and a half. So, Ananta, Paladananda, and I'm the half. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes a bogey yogi, sometimes a, rena a false renunciator. <laughs> Is she all right? Is she going to have a baby or what? <laughs> Dude, such distress over a measuring cup. When you see that measuring cup, you won't measure. You won't measure. You won't meditate. You won't meditate on Krishna. <laughs> it's got you know. It's got markings on it, and in between the markings, where the where the scratch, the markings are, there's all dirt stuck in there. The handle is full of grease and dirt. The color of the plastic is now faded. It's it's turning a, a yellow. So I'm supposed to give that to the kitchen? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I have to be really stupid to go ahead and say, well, it belongs to the kitchen. <laughs> it belongs to the garbage can. <laughs> anyway, Prabhupada said, plastic by nature is dirty. He never liked plastic. He, he made many points about that. Don't use plastic, use metal. Glass is also low class, but he said glass is better than plastic, though. Glass is also low class. He probably said no, no aristocratic people in their houses would keep glass. And they always keep things in, what do you say, quality metal or uh, some precious, what do we say, Materials like that. Yeah, so we we use plastic in our temple. We have plastic serving buckets and plastic spoons and plastic dishes and plastic everything. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we hit the golden one. You hit what? The golden one. You have one golden one? We have golden utensils, but we hit. We have <laughs> We have golden utensils, but we hide them, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Otherwise, we have too many guests. <laughs> too, many, too many cooks also. 
I, I don't know what to say to that one. <laughs> Sp speechless. <laughs> I just can't wait to, to see what kind of gold you have. This Bhagavad Gita has seen better days, too. It's still a Gita. So in this material world, you can't win and you can't stop playing. <laughs> the game goes on, but you're the loser all the time. You get a nice girlfriend, she finds your friend and runs away with her, him. You get married, and she complains that you're not making enough money. <laughs> the kids are growing up and she's complaining that you're not taking proper care. <laughs> the husband's complaining that the wife can't cook. <laughs> Everybody's complaining about something. Find a person in this world that doesn't complain about something. Everybody's complaining, right? This is because everyone wants perfection, but they can't find it because it's not here. <laughs> it's just not in this world. So the spiritual world is completely different. It's mentioned here. It's transcendental. So the word dental means, means material. That's the word and transcend means above, above the dental or above the material. That's the actual meaning of the word transcendental. Dental means material. And yeah, that's there too. Yeah, that's those who are dentists. They're transcendental. They make their money by transcending your dentals, <laughs> by pulling out your dentals. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Uruguay. You, you're the number 10. I don't give any classes unless there's 10 people. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now the class can begin. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Any questions? <laughs> He just he's just making quite yeah. Doesn't matter what I say. <laughs> just <laughs> question is there already. <laughs> so, so but there's a spiritual world. Someone asks the question, what if there's a spiritual world and, and they eat in the spiritual world, what happens to the food? So the answer to the, the question is, if you have a globjamin and you eat the globjamin, what happens to the globjamin? Well, you eat the globjamin, the globjamin is still there. <laughs> because in the spiritual world, nothing disappears. Nothing is created and nothing is destroyed. Like that. So in the spiritual world, everything exists in its pure spiritual essence, rasa it's full of uh, enjoyment, and it's e always eternally existing. So it's really, it's not possible for the conditioned soul to imagine what the spiritual world is like. We can only take it based on the words of the Shastras, that there is another world. Because when you, when you examine your own life, the things that you want in life, you can't find here. So where do those things, the fact that you want them means they exist. You want to live with it forever, but you can't. But there is a place where you, where, you, where you do live forever. You want to be happy all the time, but you can't. So there is a place where you, there is happiness constantly. So the spiritual world is the indication of the things that we want in this material world that are not here, like that. 
So it, just by understanding that, you can understand there is a place that these desires can actually be fulfilled, and that is the spiritual world. And of course, the spiritual world really means Krishna. Without Krishna, the spiritual world it has really no... Uh, I mean, it has meaning, but what gives it its shakti is the presence of Krishna. Because Krishna expands himself, or at least Balaram expands himself in the form of the, of the spiritual world. The spiritual world is a manifestation of the energy of Balaram. So Krishna's immediate expansion is Lord Balaram, who expands into the spiritual world. But expansion isn't something that happens progressively. It, something expands, but something always exists. Now, how can you figure that out? How something supposedly comes from something, but always exists all the time. So there's another complicated uh, understanding that we can't rationalize by our material calculations. How something comes from something, but at the same time always exists. Mm -hmm. So therefore the word is, we say expands, but it, all the word really means it, it manifests itself. It's always there, but then when it manifests, we call that expansion. Mm -hmm. So that's the spiritual world. So some people say, well, are there any sannyasis in the spiritual world? No, because there's nothing to renounce. Is there any grihastas in the spiritual world? Yes, because everything is meant for enjoyment. <laughs> so to be a grihasta in the spiritual world is the best, and to be a sannyasi in the material world is the best. So when you reach perfection as a sannyasi, you take birth in the spiritual world as a grihasta. <laughs> Which is pretty good. <laughs> so, the, yeah, the, the spiritual world is chintamani dham. <laughs> hmm. There's a tree in the spiritual world that's called... Uh, Kulpa Riksha. It's a desire tree. And that means anything you want, Prabhupada used the example. Here we we're standing in front of this tree, and this tree can give us one type of fruit. And that's all. But in the spiritual world, any tree can give you anything, whatever you desire. So that's why it's called desire trees. You come to the tree and you say, My dear tree. I want a, you know, a pizza with the best cheese. <laughs> and before you even finish asking for it, it's right there. <laughs> so the spiritual world uh, is fulfills all of one's desires completely, perfectly, and eternally. Mm -hmm. Here. We can't fulfill our desires because uh, the things in this world are always changing. Our desires are always changing too. We want something or desire something. We go after it. We may get it, but then it changes and therefore the desire is unfulfilled. Like that. We want happiness and we get a mixture of happiness and distress or we get just distress. There's no such thing as pure happiness in this world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's pure distress. You can be as miserable as possible here. <laughs> you can be so miserable that you're miserable. You can be so miserable that it, that you actually think, "Well, this is all there is." <laughs> yeah. You can become so degraded that. There's no limit to one's degradation also. Well, this is the material world. But the unlimited aspect of, of existence is always positive. 
there's always unlimited happiness, unlimited variety, unlimited association with wonderful living beings. So this verse is saying, yeah, there's another nature. So we're hearing all about the material nature and what it's made of, how it works, what is our relationship with it. But then Krishna now says, but there's another nature. That's my nature. It's never annihilated. When this place is annihilated, it stays eternally as it is. I was listening to Srila Prabhupada speaking about the spirit soul. And he was talking about the, the power and glory of the spirit soul, the jiva. That just like what gives heat to this body is the presence of the soul. When the soul leaves, the body becomes cold. And the body can no longer. When the soul is here, consciousness is spread throughout the whole body. I think in the, uh, you know, it says that if a hundred suns were to rise simultaneously in the sky, it might, it might uh, be equal to the light of the spirit soul. The spirit soul is so powerful. Then Prabhupada was talking about speed, because there's speed, there's speed of light, and there's speed of mind. What's the other speed? Speed of mind, speed. Speed of mind, speed of sound, yeah. The speed of sound, the speed of light, like that. So the speed of mind is the fastest that we know in this world. You're here, and you think of a place you've been anywhere. As soon as you think, you're, that means you're there by the power of the mind. So that's fast. But the soul's speed is even faster. When the soul reaches pu perfection, in other words, one becomes completely purified, and then it leaves the body, the time it takes between the time it leaves the body and time it reaches Krishna is described like a flash of lightning. So in other words, it's that fast. You can't, you can't measure the time it takes for lightning to flash. It just flashes. It's less than a second. Way less than a second. And so when the soul, and how far is it between this material world and the spiritual world? You can't measure that. It's, it's unlimitedly far. Trillions. and un, I mean, there's so many universes you have to go through, and then you have to go through the different realms, and then finally and through the spiritual world, and finally coming to the topmost section, Goloka Vedava. But if one is pure and leaves their body, that distance is traveled in less than a fraction of a second. That's how fast the soul is. Amazing when you think about it. And that's you. <laughs> that's you. You. Yeah, Mishra. <laughs> when he dances, he's almost that fast. <laughs> so you can, we can see how, how much this body limits our existence. We sometimes we we think, oh, I have a nice body, but it's all it just limits everything about our existence. Hmm. To be in this material world means to be, the Prabhupada said, <coughs> crunched up. <laughs> it's crunchy, <laughs> and it's not munchy either. So this is the material, we're so compressed, the soul desires freedom, happiness, expression, love, but can't find it here. But it exists in the spiritual world. So therefore, as it says here, one who's actually intelligent does not strive 
for any place in the material world, from the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest. Uh, therefore, one should aspire only to go back home, back to Godhead, or to develop pure love for Krishna, which qualifies one to go back to Godhead. Don't make any other desire in your, li in your life important. We may ha we have what they call Im intermediate desires, things that bring us to the higher. In other words, I want to develop pure love of God, but in order for me for me to do that, I need I want to chant purely. So I might have to work on my desire is to chant purely, but it leads me to higher consciousness. So whatever desires that we have are are suitable as long as they lead us to the goal in life, which is Krishna, or the lotus feet of Krishna. You can't get Krishna in this life. It's not possible. You have to die first. <laughs> Sorry to tell you that. Krishna is so hard to get. <laughs> he's really, he's like a real tough guy. <laughs> Radharani, she's been miserable. <laughs> she's trying to... She, she gets a taste of Krishna's association. He, her heart just flourishes with so much happiness, and then he leaves. And she's, she can't stand that. She's miserable. <laughs> That's Krishna. <laughs> He's not nice. <laughs> He takes your heart and runs away with it, and then you're lost. <laughs> but the idea is that, well, you, you can get a taste that will keep you going in this material world. That taste is the sweetness of devotion. But to get Krishna, very difficult. <coughs> it's not difficult, practically impossible. But... The thing is, try for it anyway. <laughs> Even if it's impossible, because if you fail, you over, you'll achieve something anyway, even if you fail. But if you don't try, then whatever you achieve in this world is lost, gone, kaput, finished, useless. <laughs> kaput! <laughs> That's a German word meaning, forget it. <laughs> so, yeah, so Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vas are reminding us, please come back to us and dance and chant the holy names of the Lord and be happy eternally and, and pure love of God and eat nice food and always... <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so they're inviting us to join them in the what we call the eternal Sankirtan party. The devotees go out on Sankirtan, but in the spiritual world they stay out. <laughs> the kid Sankirtan goes on continuously. Prabhupada said there's a section of Goloka Daman for those who are absorbed in worshipping Lord Chaitanya, they go there. And then they meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and they do Sankirtan there with Mahaprabhu. He said, Goloka is divided into three sections. One is where Krishna is, one is where Lord Chaitanya is, and there's another section. There's another section where Krishna is worshipped as God in Goloka. But that's a small section. It's based on that pastime of when Varuna captured Nanda Maharaj and brought him to his abode. And then Krishna came to get his father back. But when Varuna saw Krishna, he immediately started worshiping Krishna, offering beautiful prayers and washing his lotus feet. And uh, Nanda Maharaj was, and some of the coward boys were also there. They were amazed to see how Varuna, this big powerful demigod, was worshiping Krishna. So then it was understood that Krishna was God. But that pastime illustrates that there, and it mentions that there is a section of the spiritual world 
in Goloka where Krishna is worshipped as God. But he's Krishna still, that same cowherd boy of Vrindavan. But that's a small section. The bigger sections are Krishna is worshipped as Krishna, the beautiful boy of Vrindavan who steals the gopis' clothes, plays with cows, and steals butter. <laughs> and then there's Lord Chaitanya's section where they have kirtan all the time. <laughs> and nobody gets tired. <laughs> so you, then this spiritual world is full of nice variety. Material world, you can either, you know, your body can turn into stool, ashes, or dirt. That's the choice you got, which, which one you want. <laughs> well, this beautiful body of mine will become stool, or earth, or simply ashes. Great choice. <laughs> Stool means eaten by animals. Dirt means you put it in the ground. And, it, and ashes means you burn it. <laughs> Three destinations of this body. Isn't that so wonderful? And we look in the mirror and we think, oh boy, I'm so good looking. <laughs> boy, I just have to you know, make sure the girls don't get too excited when they see me. <laughs> But just think about the future. Soon it'll be dirt, ashes, or stool. <laughs> there's a place in uh, there's a place in Italy. It's in Rome. It's a monastery, and it's called the catacombs. Maybe you've been there. You've been there, the catacombs. Yeah, the catacombs. Well, there's this very, very secret monk society. But what they do when the monks die, they take the bones of the monks and they make different things out of it. They decorate the walls with it. They make furniture out of it. <laughs> so you see shin bones, you know, leg bones, skulls, and everything like that. So you can go and you can see you know, all the past monks, their, their, their bones are being used in different ways. So the last section, when you go, you go to the different sections. The last section, there's three skeletons there, standing there. And there's a sign. And, it, and it's in four languages. It's in English. It's in German. It's in Italian. It's in French. It's in four languages. And it says, and the, the skeletons have this sign in front of them, and it says, as you are now, I once was, and as, as I am now, you will be. Whoa. <laughs> really exciting, isn't it? <laughs> As you are now, I once was, and as I am now, you will, you will soon be. Adibo. Good class, isn't it? <laughs> Maharaj, that's the last class you're going to give. No more after this. <laughs> and so, I was, one senior devotee was telling me he was there. And um, so he was standing there, and one girl along with her boyfriend, they were standing there, and then they, they were reading the sign. So the girl said to her friend, I think we should go. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. So we should meditate on the fact that, you know, this body is not going to be with us for a so long. <laughs> but we have a spiritual body, which is part of our spiritual existence. And that body is eternal, full of knowledge, and full of joy. That's the real body. 
It's never born, never dies, like that. Okay, so any questions, comments about the spiritual world, material world, anything in between? Yes, you can live forever, yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I'm uh, wondering, just um, Lord Ramachandra, when he appears here on earth, does he also live uh, in the spiritual world? Like yeah, there's, there's the Vaikuntha realm, where all the other incarnations of God have their planets. And then you have the Goloka Vrindavan, where Krishna has his planet. So in the, in the Vaikuntha realm, there are different levels. So the highest planet in the Vaikuntha realm is Iodhyadam. Yeah, the place of Lord Ram. Iodhyadam. That's the highest of the, all the Vaikuntha planets. So to achieve Iodhyadam is a very glorious achievement. Mm. And all the incarnations, and they're, they're unlimited incarnations. What we read in the Bhagavatam is just a small few. But out of all the incarnations, Ramadi, Morti, Shukalani, Yamena, Tishtana, Navatara, Akarod, Bhuvaneshu, Kintu, Krishna, Swayam, Savavavat, Paramapaman, Yo, Govinda, Mari, Purusham. Tamaham Bajami. So, out of all the planets and the spiritual world, Ram planet is the highest. It's the most glorious. There's not much difference between Ram and Krishna. <laughs> there is some difference, but there's not much. <laughs> Ram's a really, let me say, a powerful incarnation of the Lord. They're all powerful. They all have supreme power. But Ram exhibits certain qualities that other, the other incarnations don't exhibit. Ram's very merciful. Extremely merciful. They also say, Patita Pavana Sitaram. Hmm. What is that? What is that thing? Ayodhya Pati Ram, 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 Dasarata Radhana Ram, Janaki Jeevan Sita Mohana Ram. Beautiful song. Uh, so, Ayodhya Pati. Yeah, Ayodhya Pati Ram Ram Ram. Yeah. The Lord, Pati means Lord, sometimes Pati means husband, but in this case it means Lord, the Lord of Ayodhya. <clears throat> so that's his name, Ayodhya Pati. That's a name for Ram. Okay. Oh yes, Mr. Mr. Guy, Uruguay. <laughs> the best of the guys. <laughs> uh, you were mentioning uh, uh, Grihasas in spiritual world. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't like. You're looking I, for a wife, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well get one from the spiritual world. <laughs> no, my uh, my friend is looking for a wife. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> without a wife, there's no life. <laughs> She'll always give you the knife, <laughs> and sometimes a lot of strife. <laughs> 
I said to him he should uh, worry only about uh, uh, connecting with Krishna and Krishna will do the rest. I mean, uh, yeah. recently I had... Uh, yeah, Krishna will give you, if you serve Krishna nicely and he's pleased, anything you need for your, for your material stability and your spiritual advancement, Krishna will automatically provide. <coughs> That's from Bhagavatam. If we have faith in Krishna. But generally we don't, we just try to get these things separate. But we just have to be patient, serve the Lord nicely, and if the Lord wants, He will give you whatever you need. Now, he, he might also see that this person is not meant to have a wife, and if he does, then it'll be just a lot of strife. So sometimes we don't get what we want, but we always get what we need. <laughs> so Krishna will... But if you, if you please Krishna and you really want something, he'll give it to you anyway and he'll say, good luck. <laughs> Rats <Rots> a ruck. <laughs> and then you have to you say, thank you, Krishna, and then... After two years later, you say, oh boy, what a mess. <laughs> but, uh, I wonder something else. If you want to be happy for the rest of your life, make an ugly woman your wife. She'll always cook meals on time. <laughs> She'll always give you a peace of mind. You remember that one? <laughs> you don't remember that one, okay. <laughs> Krishna. Yeah, if your wife is too beautiful, they say, then it's a problem. <laughs> if your wife's beautiful, then everybody looks at her and you have more problems than you did when you, before you started. <laughs> you going to look for a wife now? <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> He's getting out while it's his chances to get out. Okay. So yeah, um, Krishna will fulfill your desires if he sees that it will help you. Krishna wants to do the best for his devotee, and if the devotee needs something material which will help them in their Krishna consciousness. He may do that. But if he sees that it's going to bring you away from him, he may not give it. He'll give you something different. But you have, the, the principle is Krishna always does what's best. He doesn't do anything which will cause the devotee to go away from him. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Uh, yeah, actually, I didn't want to open that topic. <laughs> I'm, I'm well, tired. Well, let's try to close it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just want to say that I've heard, I, I've, I've been listening to a lecture where, where Shri Pop said, uh, uh, what's, uh, uh, um, there is no question of renunciation. We are training ourselves for Christian's family life. <laughs> he, said, right. he said like this. So, because you were speaking about that, so I just wanted to add. This. Yeah. <laughs> family life in the spiritual world is, you'll see, yeah, there's so many. All the, all, the re, all the residents of the spiritual world have families. <laughs> because everything is... This chintamani, everything is rasa vaisal. Rasa vaisal means full of spiritual uh, happiness. Mm -hmm. But that's the spiritual world. If you try the same thing in a material world, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's just. That's why we call this place the perverted reflection. It's a reflection of the reality, but it doesn't have the substance of the reality.
Mm. The substance is not there. That's why we call this material energy illusionary. It's real because it exists. It's illusionary because it doesn't give you what you think it should give you or will give you, or want you want what, what you want from it. It gives you something different. That's the illusion. That's why it's called Maya Sukaya. Sukaya means happiness, the illusion of happiness. But you take the Krishna conscious, you're not in the material world anymore. You're entering into the realm of spirit, and to that degree you enter, to that degree you destroy the Maya, the Maya illusion and taste the happiness that is there of the spiritual nature. So don't stop, just keep going. This process, you can't lose. You can only quit. If you quit, you lose. But if you keep going, even if you fall short, you'll be successful because Krishna sees that this devotee has tried his whole life to become Krishna conscious. Somehow or other, he didn't make it because of this whatever situation. So Krishna, in many cases, he simply finishes up your material desires at the time of death and takes you back because he sees that this person always wanted me, but somehow or other, due to some circumstances, couldn't achieve it. So that's the success. You can't lose in this process. You can only quit. <laughs> but you have to keep, keep that Keep that focus on Krishna, on devotional service, on religious, on, on practicing Krishna consciousness <coughs> as, as given by Guru, Sadhu, Shastra, like that. Mm -hmm. So we are a member of Krishna's family, but we, it's that because we still are in the material world, we still have to struggle to achieve that consciousness yet. Yeah. Okay, so, any more comments, questions? All right, thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Ki Jai.